Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all of you. I am Shikin Aziz. So for this uh, recorded lecture content, uh, we are going to look uh, on topic of pressure vessel joints design. Uh, this topic is covered under uh, EPF 4801 process equipment design, uh, one of the subject for bachelor uh, for bachelor student of process and food engineering. So reference the reference for this uh, lecture contents uh, is taken from uh, Tauler and C Not uh, textbook uh, entitled Chemical Engineering Design uh, Principles Practice and Economy of Plant and Process Design. Okay, so so now let me introduce to you. Uh, another part, okay, important part uh, in vessel, all right, uh, that you need to know, okay, the name of it is bolted flange, okay, so this uh, bolted flange joints, okay, these joints are used for connecting parts and instruments to vessels, uh, and then uh, sometimes these joints also is used uh, to install uh, for manhole covers um, and for removal vessel heads, all right? Uh, when uh, when you need uh, an access, okay, to the vessel, <clears throat> and then flange may also be used. Flange may also be used. Uh, On the vessel body, okay. On the vessel body, uh, when it is necessary to divide the vessel into section, all right, for transport or maintenance. And then, uh, flange flange joints uh, also used to connect parts to another equipment. For example, like pumps, valves. And then the size can be from few millimeters to several meters diameter. So it depends on the how much excess area that you need. So normally you will you will need a large plan if let's say you would like to make sure that the human can access and it can enter the vessel area. Alright, it's working like a door, a small door. So this is a uh, types, okay, types of flange, all right. Here I listed about five types of flange, but it's actually out, out, out there, okay, in the market, there are a lot of types of flange where you can explore after uh, later on, right. But this is a common type, okay, uh, flange, common type of flange. So we have welding neck flange, slip on flange, uh, lap joint flange, a uh, screwed flange, blank or blind flange, we is used to close flange connection when it's not in use, or let's say you have a main hole or any part, okay, that being used for inspection. So you use blank or blind uh, to close uh, the, the hole. Okay, this is an illustration taken from the textbook. Okay, the illustration that taken from the textbook for welding neck. The design of welding neck have a long, it, it has a long tapered hub between the flange ring, between the flange ring and the welded joint, okay, between the flange ring and the welded joint. So basically this gradual transition of the section reduce the discontinuity stress, okay, it reduce the discontinuity stress between the flange and the branch, okay, let's say there is a branch here, and increase the strength of the flange assembly. Uh, this uh, welding neck flange are suitable for extreme operating condition, okay, um, where, uh, let's say, at high temperature, high shear, or with a, when there is a vibration node in the vessel. <clears throat> uh, and then, uh, they will normally be specified for the connections and nozzle on process vessels and process equipment. 
Then we look on slip on, slip on flange. So for design of the slip on flange here, uh, it's actually, it, the design is slip over the pipe. Okay, it's slip over the pipe uh, or nozzle and are welded externally and usually also internally. So the end of the pipe uh, normally is set back from zero to two millimeter. And then the strength of a slip on flank is from uh, one third to two third uh, 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 that of uh, uh, the corresponding standard of welding neck flange. And then uh, actually the slip on flange uh, considered cheaper than welding that flange. and uh, are easier to align okay? they are easier to align but however it has a poor resistance okay it has poor resistance to shock and vibration load so if let's say there is a vibration not good to use a slip flange range range a fleet 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 on flange and it's generally used for pipe work all right so so this is actually uh, a type of slip on flange, uh, which have forged flange uh, with a hub. Okay, now let's look lap joint. Okay, lap joint flange is also known as van stone flange. All right, uh, and this is commonly used for pipe work and it's a cheaper with uh, expensive alloys uh, such as a stainless steel, all right, uh, because, um, uh, the flange can be made from in an expensive carbon steel, and then it's usually a short lap nozzle. Usually a short lap nozzle is welded to the pipe, but with some shadows of pipe, the lap can be formed on the pipe itself. Yeah, and this will give a cheap method pipe of assembly. The the cheap pipe assembly. All right, uh, and then for the screw flange. All right. Uh, they are used to connect a screw fitting, okay, to connect screw fitting to flange and for alloy pipe, which is difficult to, to uh, weld. Okay, now let's look. Okay, I, I try to find uh, the... Uh, the, the 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 exact picture of the flange, okay? Because sometimes it's very hard to 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 imagine how the flange looks like. So this is a flange, okay? <clears throat> and this flange is commonly been used in the pipe fitting. Okay, there is a lot of type of flange. This this is one of the type of the flange which welding neck flange. So this is taken from this website. You can refer later this website later on for your design for other type of flange because it also provide a data a technical spec of this flange like such as dimension. So if you look here, the number two here, what the name of it is but well. So there is the connection. Okay, there is a but well connection flange. Uh, and then there is a pipe of fitting, pipe, pipe of fitting here. And then uh, where is this is how I think it been connected. Okay, this is the flange. And then the well neck. Okay, this is the well neck flange. All right. So this is how you can assemble it to the uh, pipe or fittings. Okay. And then, uh, all right. Then let's look the how the exact look of slip on flange. Okay, this slip on flange. So this is some the, the, the drawing of it. So basically, uh, there are uh, slip on flange, number one. And then this number four is a fill well out. Uh, the, the number four is a pipe. And then, then you need to have fill well, fill well outside. And then there is a fill well inside, okay? So this is to illustrate my, my uh, explanation just now from the table. Again, this photo is taken from this website. And please visit this website if you interested to know more detail and if let's say you are considering this flange for your design. Okay. 
and then the lab joint flesh is actually come with two piece all right so <clears throat> So there are lab number one is lab joint flange, and then the number three here is the butt weld, and then you have numbers two is for the stop end. This is stop end, I think. This is stop end, all right. And the pipe of fitting, okay. Number four again is taken from this website. Then let's look on threaded flange. Threaded flange is also known as crude, uh, screwed flange is also known as crude flange all right so the detail the, the details of threaded flange is basically this is the drawing of it all right the number one stand for threaded flange and then how you insert them this is how you insert the part you're connecting the part or fitting all right and then there is track inside there okay there is track inside here okay this is blind flange okay basically this blind flange where, where you don't need access to it all right, you just want to close uh, the hole or any joint, all right, where when you are not needed to use the joint. Okay, this is the, 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 the look of it, okay, in reality. And then uh, the detail of the design, the technical spec, you can visit this website. All right. So number one here, the, the cap here, we call it blind flange. Okay, the cap here, blind flange. All right. Now let's look on gasket. So basically we apply gasket uh, to make a leak tight joint between two surfaces, okay, to make leak tight. So it is, it is actually, to be honest with you, why we need gasket is because it's impractical uh, to machine a flange, okay, the flange, uh, flange uh, to the degree of surface finish, okay. Uh, that would be required to make a satisfactory seal under pressure without a gasket. So it's very, it's, it's impractical. All right. So basically, gasket will be used. Okay. And then normally, gasket are made from semi plastic. Okay. Are made from semi plastic materials. And then where it will deform and flow under load to fill the surface irregularities uh, between the flange, flange uh, faces. And then, and then at the same time, it can retain a sufficient elasticity uh, to take up the changes in the flange uh, uh, alignment uh, that might occur during the operation. All right. Okay, the design data uh, for gasket can refer from SME BPP code section 8, division 1, mandatory and pedix 2, SME B1620, or from Paris Chemical Engineering Handbook. All right, then okay. Uh, this uh, table is a part. Okay, just small part. I taken from the textbook from the Taller and Synod textbook. It's actually I would like to illustrate to uh, I would like to show to you how to read this table. So this table. Oh, sorry, for gasket material. All right. Uh, from the SME PVV code section eight. All right, so uh, the minimum uh, the, in, in this column, the, the, it shows uh, data for minimum design seating stress. Okay, minimum des uh, design seating stress is the force. Okay, it's the force uh, per unit area. Okay, you can see here force per unit area or pressure uh, on the gasket, uh, which is... Uh, uh, which is required to cause the material, the, the gasket material to flow and fill the surface uh, irregularities in the gasket phase, okay? All right. All right. So then uh, the gasket factor M here, okay, this value is actually uh, the ratio, okay? It the, it's actually a ratio of gasket pressure uh, under the operating condition to the internal pressure in the vessel or pipe, okay? So the internal pressure will force, okay? The internal pressure will force flange phase. It will force flange phase apart so that the pressure on the gasket under operating condition will be lower than the initial tightening of pressure. So basically, the gasket factor will show you, uh, this gasket factor will show you the minimum pressure okay that must be maintained on the gasket or uh, to ensure satisfactory seal uh, so there is you in when you applying gasket you need to have a pressure certain pressure 
Okay, so you need to have, you need to tighten it enough, okay, to make sure that the, you meet the minimum pressure for the gasket to work. And then, uh, there is a, uh, okay, from the table also, there is uh, issues with the gasket material. There are a lot of type of gasket material actually. So please don't assume that all gasket color is black, right? The gasket color is depending on the material, okay? Depending on the material and the manufacturing uh, needs, okay? Sometimes it's due to the manufacturing processes, it become black. So not all gasket color black, okay? So uh, this is minimum gasket width, all right? And then under the gasket material here, it shows to you uh, the uh, uh, what is it? Uh, the temperature, okay? Uh, where is it? Not from here. Oh, this is not temperature. No, it's not showing the temperature. It's, it shows the gasket material only. All right. Uh, all right. Okay, uh, then the selection factor for gasket materials uh, will depend on the process conditions, okay, pressure, temperature, corrosiveness of the processed fruit, okay, will also uh, affect uh, the selection of the, the gasket type. And then uh, we need to have a look on the repetition, okay, how long you, how much you repeat the assembly and the disassembly of the joint. If let's say it's quite frequent, you're going to uh, dismantle and assemble. So you need to ensure that it is uh, can, res can resist uh, that activity. And then the type of flange uh, and flange face. Okay, so depend also well on the flange and flange face. Okay, we will look after this on flange face. All right. So. Uh, Normally, the gasket can work up to pressures of 20 bar. Okay, can work at, to pressure up to 20 bar. And uh, the operating temperature and corrosiveness of the process fluid will, will be another factor that controlling the gasket selection. So, for example, that we have, we, we have we, what we uh, have here is vegetable fiber and synthetic uh, rubber gasket. All right, it normally can be used uh, at temperature of up to 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, but uh, the other example for Teflon and compressed asbestos, okay, for compressed asbestos, uh, asbestos gasket, it can be used to a maximum temperature of about 260 degrees Celsius. And then there is also metal, okay, metal type gasket. Okay, when they, they, they use it metal to reinforce the gasket. And then it can be used up to around 450 degrees Celsius. Right. Uh, right. And then for pen soft metal gasket are normally used for high temperatures. Right. So gasket is not all every every time you mean, not, not not gasket is not all not all gasket made from rubber. Uh, please take note on that. Okay. So, flange face, flange faces, all right, type of flange face, okay, there are two types of flange faces here, we have full face flange, okay, and another one is narrow, narrow face flange, so basically full face flange, the face contact area will be reached outside the circle of bolts, I will show this after this because it's quite difficult to imagine it, what I'm, I'm explaining here through the words, but you need to see the photo. All right, and narrow face flange is actually face contact area within the circle of balls. Okay, students, actually why you need to learn all of this is because you need to consider the, the, the suitable flange for your vessel. Okay, all right. Okay, so this is uh, illustration taken from the textbook. All right, so we have uh, four type of, this is uh, basically shows you the primary example primary type of uh, fl uh, flange uh, faces. Right, there are several others, I think. All right. So for uh, the, this three, we have here full face type, gasket reading, bolt circles, spy guard, socket, spring type joints. So for this one, the three here, the three types here, gasket with bolt circle, uh, spy guard and socket, 
and ring type joint is actually under classification of narrow face flange right so the full face flange is actually have white face it this is the face all right the way when i said face is this is face actually it's actually a face that have a gasket okay gasket face actually uh, what i understand now all right so white face, white face flange are simple. It's really are simple and inexpensive. But however, it's for low pressure. All right. So please bear in mind that actually when you have a, a, a white gasket area, it doesn't mean it will be strong. Right? But actually when you have white gasket area like this uh, design, it's actually uh, when it's large, yeah, and and excess and excessively high bulk tension will be needed, all right, to achieve sufficient gasket pressure, okay, because you need to have sufficient pressure so that you can maintain a good seal, uh, at high operating pressures, okay, and then uh, and then that's why this this type of full face are only suitable for low pressure, okay, for gasket within both circle, all right. Um, or other name for it is the raised face. Okay, other name for this is raised face. Uh, it's, it's actually a common common uh, design being used, common flange design being used for process equipment. And um, uh, this, mainly the gasket is held in place. Okay, this is the gasket. The, get, the shaded area show the gasket. The gasket is held in place by friction between the gasket between the gasket uh, and the flange surface, okay, and the flange surface. And then let's look on the spy guard or socket, all right. So this also known as this, this type of flange is also called as tongue and groove face, okay, it's also known as tongue and groove face. So the gasket is actually uh, is confined, okay? It's confined uh, in a groove, okay? There is a groove here, like a drain, okay? Uh, okay? So, and then which prevent failure by blowout, okay? Which prevent failures by blowout. And then, uh, due to this design, you need, you need to have a match pairs of flange because the top and bottom design are different. So actually for this, the fabrication cost of this flange are a bit higher, all right? And, but this type of flange is suitable for high pressure and high vacuum service. So you can, can uh, so uh, you can, uh, you can expect that this flange, this type of flange is a bit expensive, uh, yeah, compared to others. Well, for ring, ring type joint, all right, flange are used for high temperatures and high pressure operation, uh, high pressure operations. So let's look the real uh, photos of the flange. So this is a full face flange and gasket. All right, this is a type of gas, this is the gasket. So this is one material of gasket example that I'm talking and I'm taking from this website. All right, this gasket is actually, the color is white. Let's say, as I, as I said, gasket is not always, the color is black or red, okay? It depending on the type of material and manufacturer as well, okay? And that, so this is the full face of flange, okay? So you will this this surface will be covered will be will be attached to the gasket okay all right for a good seal and then this is gasket within both circle or other name for it all right if you refer into this website they call it under name of raised face flange and gasket so this is how it looks like and actually the part that covered by the gasket is only in the in the bowl area okay this is in the bowl bowl area around this area only. Okay, so basically this type of uh, design, you can have a lot of choice of gasket. Okay, this is the best thing about this design. All right, so and then the, the, the surface of the gasket is smaller than full space. And again, this, this photo is like, taken from this website. You can have, go, please go visit to this website and then they provide you a table of gasket, uh, a flange. So the table of flange as, as uh, technical data. 
And then here as well for this, you can refer from uh, this website to get to know more about the gasket and the material and the application. Right, for spigot and socket or other name for it are tongue and groove, flange. So this is the type, okay, the reality. Sorry, how it looks like, all right. Okay. And this is the website where I take the photo. All right. The detail of this and the technical spec you can go to visit. Please visit this website. And there is also a lot of other website okay, that provide this. And then for this type of spy guard, okay. So this is the groove. Look here, this groove. Actually, it, the design looks similar, but actually the design for the top flange and the bottom frame are different. All right. There is a female and male joint. And then this. For this uh, gasket is inserted into this groove. There is a groove inside here. Okay, if you look carefully, there is, is a groove, right? Where the where the flange has been machined. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, how to say? As, uh, there, there is some part that we machine out from this flange. Okay, then this can be uh, for further uh, detail about this gasket. You can visit this website USA link. Then, all right, and this is ring type flange and gasket. So this is the gasket, and this flange are uh, taken from this website. While for this uh, type of uh, uh, gasket is taken from this website. Right. Now let's look on the flange design. So in some application, you may need to have a special design for flange because sometimes the suitable standard of flange are not available. Okay, so uh, it's one of the reason for this is sometimes because uh, the the flange are so you need a large flange. But if let's say you followed the standard, you may need to enlarge uh, the, the size of flange uh, compared to the calculated uh, design that you get. So when it, you increase uh, the, the uh, flange area or the whole area, and it, will, it might cost it might cost you and then better for you to fabricate a uh, special flange. So then it, maybe it can reduce uh, the, the design cost. So that is a thing that when you, when, when you need to consider to use uh, a, a fabricated flange. Okay. Right. SME BPV code section A division one provide a guideline for this, uh, the design for a for pressure flat vessel flange. So for this flange design, all right, for this flange design, things that you need to know, all right, what is important to design it properly, all right, but of course, I just covered this on the surface for, for process engineer, but this is a good, uh, or, uh, how to say, knowledge for you, all right, because this detailed design flange is not covered in this textbook, all right, well, basically, this is covered mainly under mechanical textbook, yeah, more detail, okay, more detailed design on this. But no harm if you want to try to design detail of flange, right? You can refer, there are several references that has been suggested in this textbook, okay? Please open your textbook. Right. So, uh, if you look at this illustration, okay, of uh, uh, this illustration is... Uh, as another uh, half part of flange okay so basically there is a pressure force on inside of flange so, all right so basically the balls these balls hold the faces together okay uh, resisting the forces due to the internal pressure and the gasket ceiling pressure all right so basically as these forces are off offset uh, the flange is subjected to a bending moment. Okay, there's okay. So then you need to so that's why that is very important for you to design uh, properly the gasket. If, uh, the, sorry, the flange because when it's subjected to a bending moment, so this flange can act as cantilever beam with a concentrated load. So it can dent it. Okay? So when it dent it means that we will we have leakage. And it's not good, okay? It's not good. It's dangerous, okay? And especially if let's say you contain something that not, 
that that uh, if let's say if the vessel has high pressure or contain a corrosive material inside the tank, right? So, to due to this, a flange assembly must be sized, okay, so that it has a sufficient strength, okay, it has su sufficient strength and rigidity to resist the bending moment, okay. So, um, So the design procedure for flange vessel can be taken from SME uh, BPV code, and then uh, then for design purpose, right? The flange are actually classified into two: integral or loose flange. So the integral flange has a design where uh, the the flange obtains support from its hub and the connecting nozzle uh, or pipe. Okay. Uh, where that we call integral structure, but uh, and then a welding neck flange would be classified as uh, have a welding neck flange. Okay, well, sorry, a welding neck flange uh, is classified under integral. Okay, okay, because all right, then uh, <clears throat> because the flange assembly and nozzle neck. Uh, form an integral structure for welding neck okay right well for loose flange are uh, attached to the nozzle or pipe in such a way that they obtain no significant support from the nozzle neck and cannot be classified as an integral that is under category of loose flange right so example of loose flange loose flange are screwed and lap joint flange and uh, that is an example. So let's look. Just now we do have a figure picture of that. Let me show you. Uh, where are you? Let me show. Okay, this is example of loose, loose flange. Okay, because the part is uh, loose. Okay, between the neck. Okay, the neck is okay. Well, you need to assemble it. Well, for this, uh, let that's crude. Where are you, screwed? Uh -huh. And this is another example, okay, where you can see here the neck need to be assembled into the flange area. Okay, so this, 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 this that two type uh, screw uh, or the name of it, threaded flange and leg joint flange are considered uh, loose flange. While this one, this, you can see that the neck is welded onto the flange so well that uh, so this is integral structure design so you need to differentiate between these two design if let's say you need to fabricate you prefer well that is uh, integrate design or loose flange then uh, in the designing of flange, uh, we, we need to specify the number of bolts and the bolt size, right? Uh, and then the bolt load, okay, must less than the maximum allowable stress in the bolts. And then the bolt spacing must be uh, selected to give a uniform uh, compression, okay, to give a compression on the gasket. Uh, normally, the bolt spacing uh, less than 2.5 times uh, the bolt diameter. And then uh, this formula, okay, this formula is used to calculate bolt spacing, okay, bolt spacing. Okay, where you need a bolt diameter, the flange thickness, and the gasket factor. Okay, gasket factor can take from the table from the SME uh, standard. All right, now let's look on the standard flange. Okay, uh, the standard flange are available uh, in a range of types, size, and materials, and are used extensively for pipes, uh, nozzles, and other attachment to pressure vessel. So basically, this standard of flange uh, and pipe fittings are set by the SME B16 committee. All right, and then you may refer uh, under B16, 
there are several uh, guidelines there and uh, this this figures i'm taken from taula synod textbook uh, this figure show <laughs> this figure shows uh, example of standard flange design okay so we can refer from here there is a dimension for outside diameter uh, bore this is for bore dimension uh, for diameter uh, beginning of cham chamfer and then we do have here is diameter of half okay this is half this part is half area okay half and then we can have wire here for the length through the half and then uh, then this thickness of flange okay okay thickness of flange is calculated from this part okay not whole of here okay this part only thickness of the flange so Standard flange are design method uh, by class numbers. Okay, this is class numbers. Um, or rating numbers. Okay, uh, which roughly correspond to the primary pressure uh, rating, primary pressure rating uh, of a steel flange. Uh, and then the flange class number required for a particular application will depend on the design pressure and temperature and the material uh, construction. So basically, the reduction in strength at elevated temperatures is allowed for by selecting a flange with a higher rating than the design pressure. For example, for a design pressure of 10 bar, okay, a class of 150 flange, okay, 150 flange would be selected for a service temperature. Okay, uh, below 300 degrees Celsius. All right. Whereas, if let's say the service temperature are uh, uh, is, is say 300 degrees Celsius, and a 300 pound flange would be 300 uh, pound flange would be specified. This one. So you need to take higher, all right, higher class. So uh, a typical pressure temperature relationship, okay, this is a typical pressure temperature uh, rating, okay, uh, are given in this table. Okay, this is, uh, this is adapted from SMEB 16.5. Okay, this show you, uh, this 150 here is actually a class, French class. So if we look here, 150, okay, at 150 here, uh, it can work. Uh, this is PSIG. Uh, it can work for 285. Eh? Then, then the temperature here we can refer here from the Fahrenheit, all right? Or oh, it's a bit difficult to now if I want to spontaneous uh, convert it to eight degrees Celsius. So you can have a look here, all right? Uh, how uh, the, the table okay this is actually an example of the table taken from the SME textbook the SME standard okay so I think that's it for now class all right Melinda has covered a lot of it and I hope you enjoy with my recorded lecture and I hope it can assist you for uh, assist your understanding eh? because we don't have face to face uh, class. So I wish you all the best for your final exam and uh, you are always welcome to to repeat and play my recorded video if let's say you still don't understand that is the best thing of the recorded lecture all right so see you again uh sometimes maybe next semester and then please do the best for your final exam okay class all right bye keep safe stay safe okay assalamualaikum